Hello everybody, welcome to week 10 of AeroBB. We've got Chavit here with his uh, Camry team. Sorry, Elio's just wounded me there in chat. Too soon, Elio, too soon. Uh, very nice, TV efficient Camry team. Loads of block guardians as well, amazing guardians. Like three block guardians, loads of guard, loads of mighty blow. Palm on both bitters. Super nice. Pretty crap record. He just didn't make cars. He just didn't make cars for the first seven games, and it's it. He's dropped a lot of points because of you, you know he's got this team rippling with mighty blow, and piling on, and he's just not hurt anybody yet. Um, so really backs to the wall for Chivite. Got to win his last couple of games. Um, we've got Tapioca King with a pretty nice, uh, really nice orc team as well. You know, very TV efficient. Loads of guard, mighty blow, a pommer, pretty cool. Pretty cool, uh, pretty cool teams, pretty cool bash teams, and uh, yeah, God, that was that was needlessly harsh. I was mentioning the witch. <laughs> wow, <laughs> what did I ever do to you for <laughs> you to mention my poor witch again? <laughs> it wasn't just my favourite player; it was my favourite player ever. Oh, this looked pretty clever here from Chavite. Blitzes to reposition. You don't see that from everybody, but I like I like it when it happens. You know, recognizing that uh, a little bit of position is more important than an extra hit. Really nice. Does the foul gets the removal? No send off. Honestly, I think I might have liked the Witch more. Like, the Strength 5 catcher was insane, obviously. But a Strength 4 Rackle Frenzy that you can leap? Like... It's just unbelievable. It's just such an unbelievable thing to have. Just such an unbelievable weapon. Like, the Strength 5... Blodge, Mighty Blow, you know, it's hilarious, right? Like, it's a fucking flying ogre, basically. Like, it wasn't an amazing player, don't get me wrong. But the, uh... The Witch was, like, next level. You just cannot... You cannot protect the ball versus me, right? With that Witch Elf, you just... Nobody could protect the ball versus me. At all. <laughs> no matter what they did. <laughs> they could not protect the ball. <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty good tool to have. Don't have to use it every turn. You don't even have to use it in a game. But just having it up your sleeve that you can just 2D the ball with an unbelievable likely chance of uh, getting it any time you want is just insane. Very really nice player. I really should have valued it more before it died. <laughs> uh, it was a woman kiss. Yeah, it was a woman kiss. Squirrel Girl also died in the same game, but, you know, didn't really care about that one. <laughs> okay, huge removals here. Three removals already for Chavite. Is, uh, maybe one in the half. Only had a bribe as well. Oh, they both had a bribe because it's a stadium. It's it's Chavite Stadium is the uh, is the bribe stadium referee rest area and the apple's gone for tapioca instantly. Tapioca had a babe as an inducement. Should have done. I mean, I should have just realised how good it was before she died. Really. And the worst thing is, I can't remake her in Blood Bowl 3 because Leap isn't the same. <laughs> oh, Greed's it into Dub Skulls. And the Greed wasn't even bad, right? It's 2D on a 2D on a Tomb Guardian with with uh, piling on. Reasonable to Greed it. Very, leaves him very sparse up here. I don't, I don't really like the idea of giving Kenry free space. And he's not even taking the free space. He's using the Blitz this one off to just make the middle even stronger, I guess. Yeah. 
And the outer one beat nerf is shit, you know. It's almost like the rules were made by a dwarf, isn't it? With the uh, nerfing the passing and stuff. Like, you know, it's so sad that we can't vanity pass anymore. We can't vanity pass anymore. Like, the DAC is good for scoring, right? Like, putting all of your dice in one turn with three reels for that turn is pretty amazing. But I'm sure they didn't think, like, I mean, could you imagine all leap with multiple rerolls and stuff? It'd be sick, wouldn't it? So, I, but I'm sure that wasn't the reason or we even thought about it. And the same with the passing. I don't think they did anything on purpose. I really don't think they did anything on purpose. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Not to be too mean, you know, and to have too low an opinion of them, but, uh, I just think they drew some darts, yeah, I think they just threw darts, 100%. <laughs> 100%. So yeah, Chavita not seizing the space, he could have he could have taken loads of space last turn, but he just wants to keep pounding on the uh, Oaks. Snowball's advantage. And there you go, there's another kill. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised as well, Odon. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Apparently, according to, you know, the playtesters, they, they didn't playtest it as that. They playtested it as the rules as they've always been. And they were just to surprise anybody else to find out that it was meant to be multiple ones. That's what I've heard. Whether you believe it or not. You know, who knows? Well, that's what I've heard. This is pretty shit for Tapio here, and he's got to just got to hold the center, right? As long as he holds the center, then the uh, the Kemri. These are Tomb Kings. They are Tomb Kings now. The Kemri, you know, they, they've got to like shuffle past and go down the side. Like they're not so good at going down the side. With, like no agility at all. So just just try and really hold the center at all costs. Hamez workshop. Yeah, I, I'm pretty convinced that it was, you know, but obviously rerolls, rerolls, uh, rumors aren't worth jack shit, are they? But that's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. And I wouldn't be surprised either. Like, they pretty much just doubled down on all of the sloppily worded things and just pretended. Another pom hit. It's pretty sick, isn't it? Just getting to take people apart with pom every single turn. Without uh, without consequence, right? You can just go through this every turn you get players. So you're pomming every turn, making it like Necro Necro I think are the absolute best for getting up men. Which is again why like I thought they were dangerous for Elliot. Like, you know, they get up men and then they're just teeing off with balls every single turn. It's pretty scary. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, hold on. When you know people have played the same game for, you know, 30 years. 20. Yeah, not 30 years. Actually, 30 years. 94. No. 26 years, wasn't it, when, it, when that came out? 26 years people played the same rules. So. It would even you would, I would even make it like a feature of the new rules, right? Like it's a hello sports fans, we've really shook up how rerolls work and stuff, do you know what I mean? Like you would be like a thing like that, wouldn't you? Not just uh not just uh, like is it season two, so like wasn't it? It's the official name isn't Blood Bowl twenty twenty or anything, it's season two, so they could say we've shaken it up for this season. You've got to just go like here first. Oh, I don't know, man. I don't know about that. I want, I want it. I want the cage here, and I don't roll any dice. <laughs> I want the cage here, and no dice rolled.
<laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Quad skulls there, and you've just got your balls smashed on two dice. <laughs> Quad skulls there, you get your ball smashed on two dice. Man. Did not like that. <laughs> Did not like that ordering from Chavita. And you know, look, I've done the same thing before, but it's you do that sort of thing, don't you, sometimes? But that was pretty bad. Like, I did one in my NAF game where I could have just moved a guy and then blocked. And then I blocked first and I had a double GFI. <laughs> like, just terrible. But um, when when it's, you know, a quad skull is leaving your ball open to get 2D blocked from a completely dominant position, it's pretty bad. It's interesting. I don't know how long I've played Blood Bowl 3 for. I think it's like four days. Might be five days. And I've rolled three quad skulls. <laughs> that does seem a, a little bit excessively unlucky, doesn't it? So I think no, I think you shouldn't disregard the existence of quad skulls when your ball's completely exposed like that. Com like the ball was completely exposed. In a game, you know, like, they should just be, you shouldn't, I know it's only a 1 in 12, 9, 6, but there was no real benefit in not moving at first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that's the only, that's the only explanation, isn't it? It must be both RNG. And my opponents had one quads as well, so like in four days, I think it's four days, seen four quad skulls. <laughs> So old Jim would make a 3D here, but new Jim would just score. I'm not gonna do, I'm not even gonna do 3Ds anymore. I swear to God, I'm not gonna even make 3Ds anymore. I'm just gonna score on turn eight. If I can score without any dice, I'm gonna score without any dice forever. I mean, there could be right magic card, but like, there actually could be something wrong with cyanide. However, I wouldn't, I wouldn't leap to that assumption without any evidence. Yeah, if you if you don't three D block with a reroll, you'll never hex a skull. Like, it's just not worth it for me. It just really isn't worth it for me. <laughs> Like, I hate losing too much to do it. Even if it's plus EV overall, like, you know, that 3D, because obviously you might cast them, especially with POM, right? It, bigger, bigger in Blood Bowl 2 when you can POM people. But, like, 3D, chances are it's plus EV, right? 1 in 1,000, 1 in 12.96, it's bad. And you've got way bigger than 1 in 12.96 of casting the guy. But it's just me. It's just, I can't do it. I just... It's just not worth it. I know it isn't worth it for me. I'm still thinking about those two handoffs versus the bloody uh, Skaven. <laughs> I'm thinking about that more than exposing my witch. Which the exposing the witch hurt way more than two points. Like who cares about two points? 
But exposing the witch, oh my god. Plus move, could have gone for this, could have gone for the one turn here, right, with move seven. I guess you can't just move. Just pom. Pom, 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 pom. And obviously, foul with either the rookie, right, fouling with the rookie is an option here. Because then if you get sent off, you don't care. Whereas if you foul with a dirty player, then you can't foul on the dirty player next drive with a Bry, right? So I think fouling with a rookie here is the actual play. And that actually wouldn't have got the KO, right? A rookie wouldn't have got the plus one from DP. Oh, but he could have had an extra assist. No, he couldn't. Didn't see that guy. So... And it stays out, so there you go. Good payoff for fouling with a dirty player. I wouldn't have had the balls, but there you go. Still got 11 players, but he is down a bit of quality, having to field a rookie Skellington instead of a guard Skellington. And now, Chavita's bribe is gone, but Tapio still got his. Still got a dirty player, so you can... You know, you can maybe blitz a Tomb Guardian and get a big foul in, so... Javita has probably got a setup to stop that. Loads of mighty ball, so... You know, very reasonable to get a 1-1 draw here. Kemri OP. I mean, it was a hell of a drive for the Kemri, but it hasn't won them the game at all, has it? No, no removals. And they've actually had they've actually had this guy removed, and this guy removed the wrestle Skellington. Ah, no, I guess the only one that's make he would have a wrestle or a guard on, right? So they've actually come out worse in terms of the fight. I mean, plus it depends. Like, also, I'm me, right? Like. <laughs> I'm usually thinking that I'm going to play quite well. So if, like, you know, I, I don't really ever think that the guy that I'm playing is better than me. But if you are playing somebody who you think is better than you, then you should do the more risky players, right? So that is a... Uh, there is an element of that which I, you know, that is kind of personal, isn't it? In that you should. Well, I was a big, big stand firm there. Like, you know. So that is interesting. So I tend to weight things in that, like, I won't do them. But, you know, maybe it's right for other people to do it sometimes. And maybe, you know, it's still right for me to do it sometimes, right? Like, you know, obviously, if the opposing coach is Elliot. It's different than if the opposing coach is help me. No offense, Al. So, like, you know, I like I'm, I'm not. I don't. If I'm playing Elliot, I'm not thinking I'm ten times better than Elliot or anything. Do you know what I mean? But um, <laughs> I'm certainly not thinking I'm a million times better than Elliot or anything. But you know, and I, I would be more likely to do something a bit riskier against Elliot because I, I, mean, I don't really think I'm better than him. But. Uh, I'm not really. I'm not really thinking I'm worse than him either, right? And sometimes I'm thinking my team's worse. Sometimes I'm thinking my team's worse. Obviously not in era BB, <laughs> but in certain situations, if you've got a worse team, then you know you've got to recognise that and be willing to roll the dice. You know, like like my game versus PC in Chalice when I had Amazons and he had Dwarves, I was willing to roll all of the dice then <laughs> because you know my only chance was to high roll. So, you know, just just because somebody's doing something like that, it doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means they've assessed things differently. He wanted to stand firm so he could keep stand firm in the next turn, I guess. That's why he stood firm that turn. Yeah, exactly. Not just race, just team, right? R race matchup doesn't really mean a whole lot because, 
they can they can vary a lot, right? Like my Dark Elf team versus Inera BB 2200 is a lot different to a 1600 Delft team, right? <laughs> versus a 1700 GB. So it's just, it's just it's just teams is the biggest thing. Nothing else. I was just uh, I was just saying you're not as good at Blood Bowl as Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, I'm guessing that's what. And he could have just moved in next turn. So yeah, he probably shouldn't. He, I don't think he should have stood for. Yeah, I don't think. I I, I agree with you. I, I don't think he should have stood for. But I guess that's what he was thinking that he he wants to stand up there. But yeah, you know, people just people make mistakes, don't they? Elliot didn't uh, stood firm with his tree when he should have not stood firm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly, Hanko. Well, you know, people get offended by, uh, by you know, saying they're not as good as a, a little children's game as some other people is. You know. I don't know why they do, but they do. I know I would. I know I wouldn't get offended, but he is the. Uh, Oh, all due respect is Elp's thing, isn't it? All due respect. I do enjoy the all due respect. <laughs> fair, Elliot, fair. I, I do apologise. This is a bit shit, isn't it, doing this blitz? Especially re-rolling it. If this, if this is a re-roll into dub skulls. One, two, three, four. Double GFI. Hit the ball into here. Swarmed. Lost game. You know he's 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 planning on re-rolling this if it's not a pow, clearly because he re-rolled the pushers. So if that's your plan, move the ball here first. Blood ball one on one, just like always choosing the kick. That's a joke there. In case uh, in case you're wondering, don't always kick. <laughs> Oh, skull. This looks like it could get pretty dodgy for the orcs, couldn't it? I think this is the turn where all the all the toomies come in. As a not professional Kemri player, um, this would be the turn where I would put in all of the toomies. Do it sometimes. Did he think he was going to get the chain here? Because he ran all the way around as if that was the goal. Or maybe it's for a foul. Or maybe it's just to hold the hold the sideline a bit. Look, it is the turn. All the all the toomies come in. Well done, Jim. Well done, Jim. Feels good to be right. I say that because Javit is like 73% or something in CCL with uh, Kemri. And I've played probably less than 70... Well, definitely less than 73 games ever. Never mind 73%. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All due respect's better because it's not even... It's not even implying that they deserve any. <laughs> All due respect is definitely my favourite thing. A 1D blitz. Also blocks his way forward by going that, so that's a really weird blitz. Like I don't know why you don't just make that a 2D blitz. And then dodge after following. Oh dear. Oh Tapio. Oh Tapio. Oh no. Look at this, he's rolling all the dice, pretending he's playing Blood Bowl 3. Stack up all the dice in one turn. Ah, oh, in comes the one. He can't use another reroll. And we just need, we've got, what, two chances at a push to get 2D on the ball. <laughs> wow. I don't know, I don't know. Maybe he just thought he wasn't gonna do it, right? Like maybe he just thought 
like well, I mean, look at this right before this before the turn starts. Like it, it's fair. It's you know, it's it, this is the thing. Look, look how fucked he is, right? The Toomeys are in. He's got the side not locked down, but he he had the side held a little bit he's got all like you know he probably just tried to make a two dice block for five minutes and thought fuck i've got to push <laughs> you know look at this fucking front four it's brutal it's absolutely brutal here we go is it gfi i think it's a gfi it is, he rolls a one. Gets the pow. On the sideline? Ooh. I quite like putting him on the sideline there, because I feel like if it goes out, you've got something, right? But I guess the orcs are faster than you. Like, he didn't really have anything anyway, actually. He only had this that was tied. So fair enough, keep it in, keep it in bounds. This guy's this guy could dodge out on a two, couldn't he, if it came out here? Yeah, on a three, no, actually, yeah, definitely better to keep it in. He didn't actually have anyone free. I guess he no, he could free him up. So we have this guy to keep him in. Or to go and get the ball. So maybe maybe scatter out is better. Maybe. Maybe. Oh wow. The Black Orc Dodge, love to see it. Gets the pow. Ooh. Well, that doesn't help him. <laughs> I'll have you know I'm mentally 21, MC Crew. <laughs> I'm mentally 21 and a half and twice that age. Good evening. <laughs> I've been stuck at a mental age of 21 uh, for a good 20 years now. <laughs> because of course when I was 26 I had a mental age of about 18. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how long I've had a mental age of 21. That's a good point. Oh. 1D was a bit tricky there, so he's just just trying to hold on to it, isn't he? This good good play from Chivita here, isn't it? Just not you know not trying anything special because Kemri or shite. So uh, just trying to hang on. But oh, I wonder if this is correct. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't think it is, but. Probably nothing good's gonna happen, is it? <laughs> Probably nothing good's gonna happen. <laughs> Here we go, we've got the dodge! Ah, oh, failed the pickup, diced. <laughs> Roll and pray. I wonder if you know just like blitzing and going there and then dodging out the black orc and going there maybe could have got something going the next turn because like then he can free a he can free a tomb guardian can't he next turn and then the tomb guardian steams in and then and it's like but you know there's like this four there's four uh Kemri versus four orcs there right is there one two three four one two three four five so five versus four, not that bad, but yeah, the the Tomb Guardian's about to come in next turn, which is not great. And now, yeah, now it looks over, doesn't it? To be fair, even if you haven't gone for that, don't feel the craziness. Should be GG, but you never know. I mean, actually, is a chance here, right? Blitz. Okay, so the, the play was to go one, two, three, four square, blitz him, and pile him on the ball, right? And then the ball could like scatter to here or something, or or pretty much anywhere. And then you can pick it up and dodge. Like this is actually 
the power into the scatter could have been really good. There's three three scatters with no tackle zones. Or there's like bobbles. And then uh, and then if it goes to one of these, you just 1D him. And then you go like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, G of 5, pass. Like there's actually a pretty good chance if, if, you, if you get a good scatter off this. Actually, I mean, no reroll actually, so not a great chance. But still, that, that was the way to try and get the, the scatter. He blitzes him and gets him. I mean, there's probably you can think about it more than that. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the, blitzing the Black Orc's got to be the best here, right? This guy. Because then you uh, you get this guy for the surf. And this guy can come up and pick it up because you throw it out. Mm. No, I think I, I'm, I, like, I like the Palmer Blitz there way more. There you go, that's him badly hurt. Toomey could have gone there first, right? The piece of quads. And the ca casual injury, yep. Only badly hurt, though. Too badly hurts. Not like me, where I have to take seven cars and they were all burnt. <laughs> Just too badly hurt, no big whoop. Well, there's still a chance. The other, the other, the other black orc should have done the hit, and then he's in range. This is like one of the easier turns. <laughs> Rolled all the dice in the other turns. This is actually one of the easier ones, right? He blocks, he goes four, 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 three. Lobs it to this black orc who catches it and scores. Easy. Easy touchdown there. Didn't even try for it. <laughs> Tomb Guardian long bomb, let's go. Diced. Been really funny when the Tomb Guardian passing play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's fair enough. But yep. Well, there you go. Um, what's crazy is there was just very few cars, right? Uh, ended up taking the cars late. It was mostly the KOs, like bunch of removals on uh, Chavita's drive made his drive really easy, and then obviously all the strength five came in. And uh, made tapioca's drive hard, so he uh, decided to potato, <laughs> potato away, and came up short. So there you go. Congratulations, Chavite, commiserations, tapioca king. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.